something. Let's see. Oh, there it is. All right. All right. I think I'm live right now. I think. Just, um, just give me, just give me one second. Let me just check. Hold on. All right. I think I am uh, live and I'm ready to go. Hey guys, my name is Sandy from Sandy and Jazz Gaming. Um, welcome to the, the live stream. It uh, the game that I'm actually gonna play today is called Seduce Me at Home. Um, the reason I didn't start the game is because I didn't know whether how it's gonna go or not. So, um, let's just get started. Let's just uh, let me just hold on. Let me just change the camera angle so you can see me in the um. Let's see, uh, let's make it top left or right. Let me take make it top right now for today. Yeah. All right. Now you see me pop back to the top right. All right, let's just uh, start the game and let's see if it works, all right? Let's just do that. Come on. All right. This is my Steam. I have a list games. I run things on a Mac, so just don't blame me for it. All right, let's play this game. All right, let's go. A new game. The background music is really soothing. It's nice. You just start it up. It's a fictional interactive narrative. Any character resemblance to real life people are purely coincidental. Definitely. Also, please know that the following game is made for PG-16 audiences. Please know that the sexual violent themes are explored in this game. Trigger warnings, abuse, implied rape, suicide, you have been warned. So, anyone who is not who is below 16 or, you know, just, if you're below 16, just please watch with caution. Please make sure that your parents are around and uh, they let them decide whether you can watch this or not. Just if, if you if you come by my channel, like it's good that you came by my channel. Just leave a like, say hi, say whatever. But um, please watch this thing as per your concern because I am not really sure how this is gonna go. All right, it's a new game that's totally fun. It's called Sidious Me Tommy. It has a lot of stuff. Let's get to it. Please enjoy. All right. I will Why guys. hello? My, aren't you a gorgeous sight? Can I be honored enough to know your name? What's your name? Alright, let's see what name should I put. Um, huh, what name? I don't want to put Sandy because I'm probably going to be a girl, right? So we're going to put something that's appropriate. Like... Best. Oh my... Oh my Oh my what? Shouldn't do? Oh my No no no, we just uh, make it um Let me make it Darcy the most mm, a, lovely a lovely name, name for a lovely person like you Wonderful. Eric, do your job. Very well. <clears throat> this game was produced by Seraphim Entertainment under the direction of Michaela Laws and is powered by Renpy Visual Novel Engine. We truly hope you'll enjoy this story. I know I'll enjoy it since you'll be in it. Eric. Fine, fine. <laughs> Farewell, my sweet. <laughs> Uh, come on! Is that all you got? Give me the best man, come on! It's gonna be try me, me, asshole! Ooh, shit. Crap! Missed! Missed. Let's retreat for now! N no kidding! Let's get out of here! That's right! You better run, you stupid punks! Stay out of our territory! All right, let's see if it goes. Call a coincidence that one moment of violence started a chain of events I will never forget. Let's this make this a memorable one. Created in the 70s is one of the most important in the field of financial theory. 
It is used to calculate the price of European style options and is widely used by option marketers, though there are some discrepancies that are now corrected with the modern viewpoint. I mean, it's been a long time since we got rain around here, but it is the season for rainy weather, so it's not exactly that surprising. Personally, I love the sound of it. The way the raindrops fell like the soft tapping of fingers. It was so soothing, even looking at the droplets hit the glass of the window was strangely calming. It's true, rain is actually really pretty calming. Um, yesterday we did have a big thunderstorm that went like all and all that crazy and the rain was pretty awesome because it like rained heavily. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't go outside to enjoy it because it was like at least like what 10.30 or like 11.30 in the night. But it was pretty fun to see. Although uh, I have blinds, like thunderstorm, like thunder, the light, the lightning, and everything just came through the blinds. You could see like, little flashings every single, every single hour, I guess. Right. For this reason, I felt lucky for having a seat next to the window. Though I did spend more time staring outside than I did paying attention in class. The lectures in class were pretty boring. Mrs. Phillips' voice was in sub, sub, horrific, horrific. But I was just interested in what she was saying. And since it was prepared right before lunch, all I could think about was doing other things in my free time. Honestly, I didn't care much for economics. Sure, I had good grades in this class, but it was only because I read the textbook. Read the textbook. Because I read or read, I'm not really sure, but whatever. If it's if she's telling patients to read the textbook and hit my assignments as I had to. That's good, that's good. When you're to succeed in college or any classes, you do this stuff you're told to before time, or even, like, you know, supposedly the day that you do, and don't miss it. I was only taking this class because it was mandatory. If it were up to me, I would probably have taken another course. Luckily, it was my senior year, so after this semester, it would mean the end of the high school courses forever. Thank God for that. I didn't hate high school. It was just kind of a mundane how the days drifted on and on as if there were no end to it. The only thing I really enjoyed about going to school and meeting my friends and hanging out with them. But that was just kind of it. It's kind of it. In short, I was done with high school. The start of second semester brought a note of, fi of finality, finality to it. Finality to it. I think so, yep. I had already applied to too, uh, too many universities a semester prior, and I was expecting to apply sometime in the next few months. It seemed like the start of something new, something that would change. That is, if things could change. I stared at this faint outline of raindrops in the distance for now, I was stuck in this class. Miss Anderson. Miss Phillips raised voice into the biometry and talk. And just when I was thinking about class, I quickly turned my head to face the teacher. Hopefully she didn't pick me because she noticed that I was spacing out. Um, yes ma'am, okay. Oh, so this is me, okay. Miss yes, ma'am. So, my name is Darcy Anderson. Would you care to name the equation I set up on- Alright. Ooh, ooh, is that a safe slot? Oh, no, 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 no. I want to go back. Yeah. Okay, so right mouse button is safe, right? The equation I set up on the backboard. Oh, I think I heard that about in the textbook last night. It should be the Black Scholes moral formula. Very good as always, oh, Miss Anderson. Anderson. Okay, so I was staring. This is me. So this is me, Darcy. All right, Anderson. It followed me wherever I went. Most people didn't really know my first name, but rather by my surname. So I'm Darcy Anderson. Actually, pretty good. That's nice. I like the name. Awesome. If I had kept Omeo Washindo, then it would be Omeo Washindo Anderson. I'm like, wow, damn, it sucks. No doubt, since his surname was a trademark of the internationally famous and philanthropic Anderson family toy, uh, toys, and because the founder was my own grandfather, Suzu, one of my best friends, turned around and probably gave me a punch to the shoulder. Kick ass, girl. Ooh, thank you, Suzu. From beside me, I heard Naomi, another one of my best friends, clearing her throat in obvious disapproval of Suzu's choice of words. <clears throat> she means good job. <laughs> Miss Capini. <laughs> Miss Capini. Oi. Oh, okay, so Suzu Capini. Care uh, to tell me who the, the creators of this formula, formula were? Uh, some guys Miss named Black and Shoals. <clears throat> Fisher Black and Myron Shoals. Very good, Miss Patterson. Okay, so Naomi Patterson, all right. Show off. <laughs> Better study next time, Suzu. 
Be like us and study once in a while. She looks through her older eyes and slouched into her chair as Naomi gave her a small smirk. <laughs> she always uh, pouted when Naomi showed her up. That's the end of today's lecture. Now, let's separate into groups and work on your projects. Remember, everything is due on Monday. Go ahead now. And I hate that. Everything due on Monday. For I knew it, Suzu and Naomi had screwed into the desk to align with mine, and we were turned into the three musketeers. Wherever the teacher led the students to stand in groups, we always grouped together in all other trio. It was a sheer stroke of luck that we all managed to be in the same class, so we had to at least take the opportunity and stick together as much as we could. Besides, we were most confident learning each other than, say, compared to our being any other classmate. It just made sense for us to put our heads together for any kind of project. I took out the poster we were working on and rolled it open into three desks. We were pretty much finished with full, uh, fulfilling most of the guidelines for the project, though we did still help add a few finishing touches here and there. <coughs> After working on making the poster a bit prettier, we sat back and inspected our work to see what we still had to do. Naomi, as usual, was the first to look any issues. She lightly tapped a pencil against her chin, staring intently at the project. Alright, so let's see. We finished the budgeting section, the building leasing, and the cost for labor. What else do we need? I don't know. You tell me. You're a genius. She used to straighten up her look at the poster. She stroked her chin after a few seconds of face and she spoke How up. about a company name? How about a company name? Yeah. Did, did we, we really skip, skip over that? that? Sure, yeah, yes, you did now. Of course we did. You always go straight into the logical statistics and stuff that you completely skip over the fact. We need a name for our project. <sighs> At least we caught it this time. What do we name it? Hmm, not sure. Give what do you think? Please. Yes. It always came down to me. Whenever there was something to be named, our title was a master in any decisions. Even when I didn't want to be. I like Trinity Corporations. That is way too predictable. How about the Dragon Company? Don't tell me to choose. What do dragons have to do with our project? What? It's a totally unpredictable name. It's hot. But our company sells bubble gum. Who said we can't produce spicy bubble gum? <sighs> you go, girl. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think? William looked at me unexpectedly. Even though I wasn't quite sure myself, I didn't want to choose sides. But for me, I would say, oh shit. Oh my god. Come on, I told this game not to let me choose. I hate choosing. So, aww. I don't want to choose sides. She's the nerd, she's the badass one. I don't know. She's creative though. I like Tr Trinity Corporation like a little on, on the nose a little bit because you look three and then Trinity Corporation. It's so on the nose. Dragon Company, that's, that's, that's off off topic and like totally you know creative and stuff so i i think i'd prefer go with the dragon company but if i had to name it i wouldn't name it since it's a bubble gum i would name it um damn what would i name it i just thought of a name just a few seconds before damn how could i forget uh give me give me two seconds um Bubble Incorporated. So it's a bubble, but then you're blowing it. It's a blobble. Blobble Incorporated. It's a nice name, but I'll go with Dragon Company. Booyah! Dragon Company it is! Alright, now that we've decided on a name. This we ended our name game. We could scramble my <laughs> Lisette. Huh? Who was that? Ignore it. It's just Lisette. What the hell is Lisette? I looked over my shoulder to see her laughing with her circle of friends, mostly compromised a couple of people that were practically friends with everyone in the school. And as a result, everyone in the school knew them. In the center of all was Lisette White. She sat with a partial indicated she was still working, but she also really was ready to casually chat about her day. Just like, you know, this, maybe, like, you know, just an uh, arm behind the chair, be like, just doing work. Like, hey, what's up, dude? Nah, not much, man. Just doing work, buddy. Right? Hey, well, with you, man. Well, cool. So it's gonna be that. Alright, she had an endearing balance of charismatic and awkward, which was readily apparent, but when she when she first talked to someone, it was ready to make her smile and laugh. 
and she was quite the comedian as well. Sure. Basically, she was perfect. Not that she was a robot or something, but she was the student that everyone else wanted to be. Give me one second. Lisette right, was bright, easy going, and above all, above all, not all, had her future laid out right in front of her. Unlike the average student, she knew what she wanted to do right after high, uh, after high school, and as a result, she was confident and ambitious. Though sometimes it could rub a lot of you people, a lot of people the wrong way. Moreover, I had known her ever since I was young, but it ultimately resulted in rivalry that continued today. Of course, my friends knew what was between us. Upon seeing me glance after her, they shifted their attention to her. Their attention to her. She doesn't even look like she's working, in my opinion. Uh -huh. She probably is, but she's too much of a stuck-up priest to allow herself to look like she's actually doing work. Preach. Oh, come on, Suzu. She may be a little off-putting, but she's not the giant priest that you're making her seem to be. Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. The I day she it. isn't a priss is the day I turn into you. Damn. What's that she's supposed on, she's to She's setting mean? bars. Never mind. It's about time. Let's bail. Bail, yeah. The bail has run. The bell has rung. Surprisingly, Suzu was the first out of the classroom, slinging her backpack over her shoulder with ease as she quickly strolled out the door. Her seat isn't even closest to the exit, and she always manages to be the first one out of the door. I don't think I'll ever understand that. Maybe, maybe not. She gave me a little smile as we relieved by the fact that it felt the same way as she did. See? Why can't she just be normal like the two of us? Because not everybody can be the same, Naomi. You may not be Naomi Watts, but you are Naomi. What the fuck? <laughs> it's Suzu, Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> oh, that laugh is like. <laughs> yeah, sure. True. Yeah. Oh jeez. Man, you guys are slow. Are you coming or what? Yeah, hold on. We heard you the first time. Not everyone has rocket boosters attached to their legs when the bell rings. Are you kidding me? That class was ridiculously boring. Even Miss Valedictorian here was dozing off a bit. Huh. I do have to admit I was spacing out. And yes, but just because I answer the one question doesn't mean I'm automatically the valedictorian. A valedictorian basically means that you're top of the class over the college, the A, a plus student of everything. Okay, so it wasn't too interesting. But you should at least pay attention when Phillips is talking about the important parts. So you finally admit it. We're finally on the same wavelength. Welcome to the club, Patterson. Oh. Please, don't call me by my last name. This isn't the classroom. And never in a million years will we ever see things eye to eye. Calm down, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Despite this, they both burst out in laughter. Normally, anyone would think that opposites like them would never, would, they wouldn't ever associate with each other. But even though they were so different, the friendship somehow made a lot of sense. Sure, friends, friendship, all like okay, just like relationships. You know how they say like opposites attract each other. Um, it's like it's basically pulling that out the magnets. But it's like there's a problem. The opposites attract each other. Sure, that works in a relationship. But you know, a friendship is also a kind of relationship that works very well with opposites. So you say you're the studious one, and then there's the other person that's actually studious. No, yeah, I'm the studious one, and the other person's like uh, not so studious, but you know has has fun along the way, and you know, like the other person that you know stays in, kind of an introvert, but the other person like extrovert. So you both mix together, and then become like a totally new, like totally one person. You know, just you start to hang out with them, you like like you have fun. So then you slowly start becoming extrovert. You know, it's it's good, it's good, it works out fine. Maybe they were perfect compliments or personally just indicate the possibility of their friendship. After all, we all three had been the best friends since preschool. Alright, so where are we heading to first? Cafeteria? 
I think we can all agree that we're really hungry, especially after hearing about our company's line of deliciously spicy bubblegum. Who would even buy that? I wonder. Me? I would pay good money to get a taste of it. <laughs> they do like spicy food after all. Okay, so so Suzu is a bit of a badass. She does she does things that you know interest her. She, she's like adventurer. She wants to go on. She wants to do new things. That's nice. That's nice. I like spicy food too. Spicy food is amazing. Oh my god, the place looks beautiful. We're in the cafeteria, a bustling room filled with the aromas of different kinds of food. As we got in line, we ordered our meals and chatted Cajun food. fries and the spicy chicken burger for me. That's my definition of a good meal. I'll take a tuna sandwich and some juice. You're probably going to need water or something to curb all that spicy flavor, Suzu. I can't be tamed by the likes of that. If it's spicy, then it's gotta be all or nothing. You're crazy! Hell yeah, I'm crazy. I think I'm getting a migraine. I think I'll go with. Mac and cheese and a soda. Once we got our food, we settled down at the empty tables, pulling our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. So as you learn, I leaned back in her chair, tilting it back so that she could rest her feet on the table by our food. All right then, is there anything we want to talk about? <laughs> Bored already? I know, let's talk about... Say boys and I will never speak to you ever... Aww, why not? What's so interesting about talking about guys? It's not like any of us are going to get boyfriends anytime soon. We don't know that. What if one of us does get a boyfriend? Like that's going to happen, Naomi. Look at us. I'm a tiny Italian. You're a ditzy blonde. She's Italian? What the fuck? Hey! No offense. And Anderson here. Well, I guess she could land a boyfriend or girlfriend if she wants. Or a girlfriend? She can be a lesbian if she wants. Yeah, it's 2017. No gender association, you know. And no sex association, you know. True. That's okay, Susie. I'm not sure I want a boyfriend yet. Okay, honestly, if I was in their school, I would at least ask this Susie person out. At least flirt with this one. Actually, wait, I'll flirt with these two, but I'll at least ask them to uh, Susie about because, oh my god. Why not? She's wild. It's her senior year. Might as well get a boyfriend. True. Maybe she's just not interested in a relationship, Suzu. <sighs> Sleepy. Well, I don't think it wasn't about wanting a relationship, but more of there was no one interesting enough to be in a relationship with. Don't get me wrong, I'm an open person, but there were not many interesting guys in the school to grow up with. If I was there, you would have seen how interesting I would have been. Lord knows. Who knows, time is home. Naomi looked at me, wanting to continue the conversation. However, before that she could speak, the speakers in the cafe started up an announcement. I got through the cafeteria. Miss Anderson, please come to the main office in the I do not want to freaking save my... Oh my god. Oh my. Ooh. Looks like our plans have been cut short. The men in white coats have finally come to get you. <laughs> Suzu, don't joke around. What if it's serious? Ah, fine. If something happens, just call us. Sure, I will. Funny enough, something did happen. There was certainly no laughing matter. Cold. It was really cold. I do not want to save you, petty fox. Can I just push enter for those? Oh, there you go, enter works, yes. Alright, so I'm gonna use enter as well. Alright, the rain became heavier than that afternoon, accompanied by, my ro by rolling thunder. Now and then, the skies had turned dark, though I couldn't see any of it under the black umbrella. Now that I was looking up, in fact, looking up was the exact opposite of what I wanted to do. I stared at the grass beneath my feet, unable to look up at the people weeping around me. All I could see was the damp grass underneath my feet. Only the monotone and eulogies that floated through my ears reminded me that I was at a funeral. Oh, yeah. It went dark all of a sudden. Someone died. It was only when the speech ended that I finally was able to raise my, raise my head. Harold Anderson. Ooh, damn. I think that my father or brother, I'm not really sure. Okay. 
Small grave of people, mostly made of relatives that I didn't even know related to me, but how to go a simple small grave. For a while, I heard was the sound of raindrops and umbrellas. If it, if it weren't raining, everything would probably be a, a heavy silence. I looked beside me where my father was standing and holding up a large black umbrella for a small family of three. His face was emotionless, a strange sight next to my weeping mother. I wondered what was going through his mind. So Harold Anderson could have been my brother, I think so. After all, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Harold Anderson, I think so, could be the my grandfather. There you go, the grandfather in the story. For all, etched in the the great tombstone before us was his father's name. My grandfather, the one who raised me like his own daughter and had passed away that day. The ceremony was small, only close family were allowed to come. Slowly through. Slowly though, people began to leave, leaving my father, mother and me behind the grave. A man dressed in a clean black suit under the uniform black umbrella of the funeral days walked towards us, introducing himself as the grandfather's lawyer. He pulled out a few documents from his suitcase and began to read aloud its contents. And now, I shall read Harold Anderson's last will and testament. Only my parents and I were able to be present for my grandfather's will. It was under the strict request of his lawyer, and there was a reason why. And to my dearest granddaughter, I give my estate. All the furniture and decor that resides within the house shall also be given to my granddaughter. What? What? I couldn't believe my ears. I had earned the family estate at 18? That was impossible, and yet it was written by my own grandfather's hand. He passed the family estate to her? Why am I not surprised? No wonder you had an emotion on his face. Dear. Well, did he say anything about what will become of the CEO and chairman position of the Anderson Toys Company? No. It is presumed that the vice chairman will succeed the position. <laughs> Even to the bitter end, he wouldn't give in. Oh, what a stubborn old man. Uh, okay, so he has a little bit of daddy just because of... Uh, his, his dad wouldn't allow him to be the CEO since he was a son, and like he appointed a different vice person like other than him, so he must have had a job in his company, but like not like, particularly in line. I think so he was a part of the board members or something, but still, you know, like he he he, he, could, he couldn't be the heir of the thing. Shaking his head, my father turned to face my mother with a serious expression on his face. About the estate, should we send her there to get used to the building? It'll be a good place for her to live after high school. I know it would be a good place for me to live after high school. Are you sure we should? Why not? This would be a good experience for her. Yeah, sure, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it'll be a good experience. Honey, what do you think? Hmm. I really wasn't sure what to say. Where did my grandfather think that I was the appropriate heir to the mansion? Was I even ready to live on my own? Well, that seems to be it. We'll be taking our leave now. I'm sure the little heiress needs some time to adjust. David! Ooh, he's angry. He's, he's angry right now. He said. Even though she raised her voice, my dad wordlessly began walking back to the car. Dissipation. Don't mind him, honey. I think that your grandfather's passing really affected him. Why don't we get back home for now? Sure, Mom. It, it, it sounds good. It's a good idea. You can go ahead to the car, Mom. I think I need some time away with Grandpa. Oh, of course. Well, Take see. all the time you need. Thank you, Mom. I want to say my last goodbyes. She gave me a quick hug and hurried after my dad. I looked around the, the funeral grounds, which was completely empty, save for the sullen-looking grave that was laid in front of me. I'm sure that if Grandpa were in charge of arranging all this, it would have been much different. It was blatantly obvious that my dad was in charge of the whole event. Who else would bury with their own family the same day they pass away? Everyone knew my grandfather's love for toys, and yet the grave was a mere stone slab on the ground, void of any children's toys. My dad didn't, didn't even bother putting flowers. His disdain for my grandfather was almost pitiful. Sorry, Grandpa. I tried to force out some words, but the only thing that came out was a choked sob. He told me to stay strong, but right now, I'm the farthest from it. Like that one time, a long time ago. Grandpa! He looks awesome. He, he, he looks pretty awesome. Oh, it's so good to see you again, sweetie. I swept on the giant bear hug and we both laughed as he swung me around like an airplane. 
It was one of my favorite things about seeing my grandfather, the way he greeted me. Unlike my father, my grandfather was loving and playful even as I grew older. Sorry that Daddy, could, Daddy couldn't be here today. He said that he, was feeling too, he wasn't feeling too good again. It had always been like that Dad missed every visit to Grandpa's house, citing that he was busy with work or wasn't feeling good. Is that so? Well, that's okay. Daddy can come around next time. And you're here, right? Yeah! So what are we doing today, Gramps? Mommy said that there's a new dessert cafe open in town. Maybe we could go? Oh, I would love to. But I've been so busy with the company these days. We're actually working on a little something. Would you like to see? Hell yeah! Ooh! Is that a toy? It is. I was designing a new line of them. But I feel like something's missing. Hmm. You don't think you could help me out, could you? Sure. Of course. He placed the toy in my hands with a smile. As I inspected it carefully, it was beautifully crafted. Obviously, a lot of work was put into it. There was one thing, though. So, what do you think? Mm, I think the heart under his chest should light up when you hug it. It'll be like it's alive, and it can be like a little night light before you sleep. He stroked his chin, considering my input while nodding his head. After a few moments of silent deliberation, he turned to me with a chuckle. That's a great idea! I'll get to changing it right away. You're always like my little lucky charm, dear. You always know what to add to make the perfect toy. Yes! <laughs> well, I hope I need to be like you one day, Gramps. You want to make toys as well? Well, making people happy is the best feeling in the world. I don't know if I want to make toys when I grow up, though. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. Yeah, that's the way to go. Oh man, I gotta check something. I got something in my hand. Not fucking. Yep. Hey. Your father. No. I'm sure he it just wants the best sense, for you. So it's fine. I'm not so sure about that. I don't know. My daddy has issues, so probably it sucks. Um, it sucks that. He has issues. If you, if you were if you, if you came back as a ghost, you would probably see that he actually does not give a fuck. But he's a great guy. I like him a lot. <coughs> Sweetie, look at me. He bent down, down to look at me. I level with the serious look on his face. As much as your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. As much as oh, your father may say something that doesn't make sense now, you must remember that he's always thinking about you. He loves you. There's no doubt about that. And you need to love him just as equally. Yes, Grandpa. I don't hate Daddy. I really do love him. I don't know why he's like this though. Your father and I have had some difficulties with each other in the past. But it's nothing that you should be concerned about. If you say so, Dad. If you say so. I heard I had tidbits, tidbits from my mother and various other people. The only people who had stayed quiet were my father and grandfather. Both of them refrained from saying a word to the subject matter, but it was clear that whatever happened set a wall between them. It's hard, though, trying to pretend as if nothing were However, wrong. no matter what, you have to stay strong. You're a big girl already, and, well, there'll come a day when it seems like it's you against the world. But always remember that your family and friends will be here with you. Thank you, Grandpa. That's actually motivating. Thank you. Daddy, Mommy, your friends at school, me, we'll stand together to get through it. Yes, we will. How can you be so sure of that? Because we'll be right here and here. Just, he pointed a finger to his head, for, to my head first, and then he pointed in my chest. So stay strong. Promise? I will, Grandpa. I will. For a moment, he looked almost sad, pleading. But as quickly as it had come, an expression disappeared from his face. It was all smiles once again. Promise, I promise, Grandpa, that I will be strong. 
Even when you are passed away, I will be strong, I will not cry, I will pull myself up and I will continue to take over the world with my peace and passion for making people happy. Alright then, enough of that. How about I whip up some special homemade dessert? I know I can't accompany you at that new cafe, but we sure can talk and eat while I cook and do some paperwork. Homemade dessert? I'll race you to the kitchen. Hey, slow down there. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> nah, Grandpa. You will be the very home I love to see you in. Why? Why would you think I would be able to take it, especially after this? The surge of anger bubbled with me, but I quickly swallowed it. There was no use getting mad, especially when the person in question was no longer there. That's a good, that's a good, uh, something to call it, mindset to have. I'm sorry, it's hard to stay calm when you've left me with so many questions, especially about what happened with you and Dad. Huh. What am I doing? Talking to a grave. My vision blurred and I suddenly realized that I was crying. My face heated up as tears rolled down my cheeks. I, I'll bring you some flowers later. I, I miss you, Hems. I'll try my best to fulfill my promise I gave you, even if the world might be turned against me. I left the grave wiping my tears hastily so my parents wouldn't see me. Well, it's time to head back home. I'll cook up your favorite lasagna when we get home, okay? Thanks, Mom. I like lasagna. However, my dad didn't speak the entire drive home. I wanted to talk to him, but after this mo after his moment at the funeral, I wasn't sure if it was a good idea. It's about time we took off those dreary black clothes. Gathering my courage, I decided then that it was time to talk. Dad, could I ask you something? Go ahead. Why do you want me to move into the estate so soon? I thought I made that rather clear. The college near your grandfather's house is well known for its business program. You are planning to major in business, yes? Right after you graduate from high school, you'll just live there and can easily commute to and from school. It's a perfect fit for you. Sure. But it's so sudden. You just said so quickly right after the funeral. Uh, don't be so sensitive. If you're like that in the real world, you'll be crushed. You know what? I just gotta check my notifications. I hate having notifications on the, what do you call it, my phone. I'm just saying that maybe we could talk a bit more about my future. In reply, my father rubbed his temples and sighed quiet. After you graduate from college, you'll work at Anderson Family Toys. I have connections since I am part of the board of directors, so you will be guaranteed a spot. That is what we talked about before, yes? But what if... Stop mumbling! But what if I don't want to work there? Okay, Dad? What if I don't want to work there, right? Don't be silly. It's the family company. Our company. I'm not just going to hand it over to some incompetent vice chairman. Hmm. He came close to me and his face softened. Look, this is all for the best, okay? You may not know it right now, but you will appreciate it later. Maybe that. Let's see. This, the future is too far. I'm just in my senior. Come on, give me, give me some time, right? For some reason, when I heard him say that something snapped in me, I wasn't exactly sure what it was, but it made me feel so angry. Do you even care that grandfather passed? Oh shit! Darcy, Darcy, Darcy Anderson. No. You do not ask a man whose dad passed away to tell him that. Do you even care that he dad passed away? No. You do not do this. No, you don't do this, but but it's a story. She wants to know what happened. Of course I do. Well, everything seems fine and dandy to you. Things couldn't be better. Excuse me? I don't like your tone, young lady. You say nothing ever happened at all? Like you just ignored the fact that he's no longer here? Do not raise your voice at me. Sure, Dad. What did he ever do to you to deserve this? My father, his face hardened, crossed his arms and erupted in angry laughter. Ha! <laughs> You sure place him upon a pedestal, like he's some kind of venerated god or something. It makes me sick. I want 
don't know who's the voice actor of Mr. Anderson. It kind of, it kind of sounds like Keanu Reeves. It, 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 he has the same voice in John Wick and uh, like the Matrix series and stuff. He kind of has the same voice. Is that it? Are you happy seeing Grand for the Dead? While everyone was grieving, were you holding yourself back from laughing in everyone's faces? Did you feel just a bit happier seeing him lie in the graveyard? Oh shit. Flash of rage crossed his face and he whipped the back of his hand across my cheek. You don't know anything! Running your mouth like somehow you know everything that went on when you're just a little girl that doesn't know how to keep her mouth shut! You did not know my father! You did not know what he was capable of! Of course I didn't know. No one told me anything. I just heard tidbits. Dad. I just heard tidbits. Is everything alright? What happened? Wow, Mom. Nothing. Not hungry, I think I'll just go upstairs. Honey, wait! I quickly turned and ran up the stairs to my room, slamming the door behind me. My breath came in short pants. Pants. And for a while, I just leaned in against the door to my bedroom, and she sliding down to sit against it. How did things become like this? My cheeks still throbbed. I tenderly stood up and looked at the mirror and see how it looked. Hopefully it doesn't bruise. <laughs> what am I saying? Tears from the corner of my eyes, but I blinked them back rapidly. I couldn't cry for the second time today. I had to be stronger than that. Are you all right? Your father told me nothing happened, but you know your father. Nothing happened, Mom. I just lost my head, but nothing happened. Just, 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 just leave me alone for a moment, Mom. I need my time. The lasagna's done, though. And I don't want you skipping any meals. Are you sure? Yeah, don't worry about it, Mom. I'll come downstairs later to eat. You're not telling me the whole story. Yes, I'm not. Just don't eat right now. Please, dear. Tell me what's going on. I wish you would tell me why you're being like this. I wanted to tell her. A part of me was screaming to tell her what Dad had done. At the same time, I knew she couldn't fix anything. Besides, I was moving out regardless. I remained silent, letting the event remain in the well, past. I'll leave your food on the table if you want to eat it later. Thanks, Mom. When the mom left me alone, it was strange to think that she was only a few inches away from me, only separated by a single wooden door. I really didn't know what to do. I needed to do something, anything, to get up my mind off what happened. Anything would be better than thinking any more about the pain still radiating from my cheek. Yeah, that was actually a really hard slap. Holy shit, that was hard as fuck. I do like that though. The way that the gun is game is pretty awesome. I, I like it a lot. Like the sound actors, the, uh, the, the, the voice actors, the sound effects and everything, even the climbing up and down the stairs, banging the door. It's pretty awesome. The slap, the, holy shit, that was big. Alright, let's continue. I was going to move into my grandfather's house tomorrow. I should probably pack my stuff so it would be prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, that was a good idea. I should start packing. I opened the closet, rummaging around for a little while before I finally found two large bags, pulling them out in the floor of my room. I then began to empty my drawers and cabinets so that I could bring all my things with me. I didn't have much to bring other than just clothes and some toiletries. It was kind of bizarre that I didn't have many personal belongings. It wasn't like my luggage was completely devoid of them, but I certainly didn't have many things in my room that what I would miss if I just suddenly left the house. I shook my head to rid, my, rid myself of those thoughts. If it were going to be my new home, I would have to feel like it. One way or other, I was going to make it a home. You turn the tables on me now, you trap me in the case of hell. This was packing the things, cell phone began ringing and ringing about. I slid the phone on my pocket and answered while slowly easing myself out of the bed. Who could possibly be calling? Hey Anderson, you there? Suzu, hey! Oh yep, yeah, I'm here. Is everything alright? We were worried about you, so we decided to call. Uh, what can I tell you, Suzu? Uh, Naomi, what can I tell you, Naomi? Uh, things just took a worse turn. Hello? I'm really glad you guys called, though. Let's manage to come out. All it was only a whisper. What happened? I... Are you okay? It depends. If I tell you, it's going to be a lot long story. Well, I slowly began to tell them about the funeral. That afternoon, a small silence followed when I was done recounting what happened. And to my relief, Naomi finally spoke up. I can't begin to imagine how you must be feeling right now. I'm so sorry. 
Do you want us to come over right now? No, it's okay. My dad is in a good mood, so we could could we just keep talking on the phone like this? Of course. We'd stay on the phone until the crack of dawn. Right, Zuzu? Yeah. We're always here if you need us. After all, we wouldn't be the awesome triple threat trio without you, right? Still going? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's still alive. Um, hello? I don't know shit. Still going? I don't know. Am I alive? Uh, I don't know if it's still alive. I think we're alive. I think we're alive. Hold on. Yep. Just, just let's continue playing. All right. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm um, sorry for the abrupt break because uh, what I forgot to do was connect my phone to the charger on uh, on my phone, uh, my laptop to the charger. So it kind of like went all black and this this, this happened. Uh, yeah. Alright, let's get out of this. Okay, there, there you go. That works, I guess, now. Alright, what's happening? Alright, uh, yeah, sure, okay. Triple okay, Threat Trio? Go. That sounds it's like the name of a gang! Alright, my mouse is not working. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're all taking on the world together. We've got to sound somewhat scary, or else no one's going to take us seriously. What's with you in naming things? I don't know, Naomi, I don't know. You've got to step up your game, Naomi. Falling behind to the cool kids like Anderson and me. Hey! I'm a cool kid! If anything, I'd say you have to step up your game! <laughs> we chatted cheerfully all about all sorts of things. Very soon I had forgotten about the events that day and was engaged in a conversation about Naomi's favorite TV show, some program called Herlock. Oh my god. Is it a problem of Sherlock? Come on. But whatever, Harlock. We all agree that the actor playing the all, all titular character certainly had a very distinctive look about it, about him, with a long overcoat and scarf wrapped around his neck. We had many disagreements over who we thought was the coolest character. <laughs> ah, yeah, he has really high cheekbones and his eyes are pretty though. I do have to say, I prefer Jetson. And as bonus, his actor, uh, his actor is just so sassy. Hip off to Watson is Jackson. Alright, so who 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 will be playing Sh uh, Benedict Cumberbatch? Is it is it is it is it Sausage with Mick Benetton? So Bandit Patch? I looked at the clock hanging on the wall and realized how late it was. 
Whoa, it's already 1 a.m. Sorry for keeping you guys up so late. I think I'm going to hit the hay for today. See you guys at school tomorrow. Should probably shower and go to bed. I can't believe I stayed up this late just to talk to my friends. But it was really nice. Well, to the bathroom I go. To the relaxing shower, nothing be hot water and the feeling of being clean. For drying myself, I probably dust in my pajamas and crawl into bed. Ah, uh, nice hot shower after a long day. I'm so glad to be finally back. Um, but did you forget one thing though? Uh, wasn't the wasn't the food around? Wasn't the food set in the dining table for you to eat? Okay. All right, it'd be a really long day. I knew that I was wishing for something to change back in the class, but I certainly wasn't expecting any of the things that happened today. And I have to go back to school tomorrow. Ugh. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Darcy. Every, everyone pity school. I hate that. I curled up on my side and tightly wrapped the blankets around me. I really wasn't in the mood for returning to school, but my dad probably would make me go just for the sake of it. Time to go to sleep. Good night. Bye. You reach out the lamp for my night time to turn off the lights. Ooh, dark. But my mind was so lost in the passing of my grandfather and all the thoughts of inheriting something so big that it haunted my mind the entire night until next morning. I shook my head to try to clear the sleepiness out of me to reveal I really didn't get any sleep last night. It was already time to wake up. Wait, school! No, as soon as I let it go to school, I slid out of bed and looked at the vanity mirror. That's a relief. Luckily, there was barely a bruise on my cheek. You had to squint to actually see it. I doubt anyone would actually notice unless they leaned in really close. Breathing out a sigh, I got dressed. I took my backpack and caught the bus to go to school. That wasn't even hours before everyone heard of the news. I was approaching school and given condolences for my loss. However, that wasn't what star shocked my friends. Wait. So you have the whole Anderson house to yourself? <laughs> Lucky as hell, friends, man! Right? They, they have the, the, the friends, man. They they get the best news of all. It's like they don't they don't care about the sad news. They give you condolences, but like, like what? <laughs> <clears throat> Quit being so sensitive, Naomi. Quit being so vulgar, Suzu. Sure. Yeah, that works. Epic Suzu right now, man. Of course you would side with her. Aww. Huh. See? At least she knows how to have fun. <laughs> I know how to have fun. You don't need to be wild to have fun. Guys, I'm going there after school, too, so because my parents want me to get used to living there. Seriously? It hasn't even been a day since you came back to school. I know. But my parents want me to try living there as soon as possible. Still, that's really fast. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, I'll party all night, stay up all day, and get a bunch of boyfriends and have group sex. That's okay. Of course. <laughs> but even the comfort of my best friend... What? What just happened? Yeah, life seemed kid testing me. Oh, there you go, there you go. Hey! Don't go around shoving people like that! Whoops. Did I strike a nerve, Capini? Ooh, it's it's Lizette. Why does she look like a guy though? <laughs> she looks like a guy. She lowered a small laugh as she twirled her hair on her finger. Lizette, one of the last people I wanted to see today. It's not me you should be apologizing to. Oh, Anderson. Hey, how's it going? Bullshit life, man. I'm alright. Uh, haven't you already heard, Lizette? Of what? Her grandfather's passing. Uh, Andy, well, have to bring that I'm sorry that. about that. I don't really watch a lot of news. It doesn't really sound like you mean it. I do mean it. Earnestly. Why wouldn't I? Typical Capini. Isn't her family involved with the Mafia or something? I wouldn't be surprised if she brought out the bat from behind her back right this moment. Jesus, man. Typical Capi. Right. I had nearly forgotten the crowd that followed the set, which was mostly comprised of people that no one wanted to see on a typical school day. No one has the slightest idea why exactly they followed Zeta down persistently, but they labeled themselves as social equals with her. That is out of line! Suzu comes from an honest family! Says the one whose family profits from political scandals. Holy shit. <coughs> Snob.
Yeah, your dad doesn't make anything unless he's in the court with dirty politicians. Ah! Hey, let's all calm down for a second, all right? I'm sure Anderson needs some time to recuperate. I mean, what just happened? We need to give her some respect. Thanks. Just stop. Uh, Sorry, uh, let you feel sorry hmm? for me. What are you talking about? I'm sure you're happy seeing me like this. You already have everything you wanted, and how to see me like this life couldn't go any better. Bitterness seeped in me, and words started flying my mouth without filter. But honestly, I didn't care. I was so consumed by anger that I only saw Lizette in front of me. What exactly am I to you? Just another the part of your obstacle course? Is that what I am? I'm sick of it, Lizette. I'm sick of all the character shades. I'm sick of you. Gaps. Gas rose from the crowd around her. I was thought back to school. All the way, even my friends beside me looked at me in surprise. The one girl looked like she was going to speak up, but Lizette held her hand up to stop her. There was an emotion in her face, but couldn't quite make up. But I could see a form of pity in her eyes. No, don't you dare pity me, Lizette. I looked away from her. I didn't want to see that emotion in her eyes when she was talking to me. And I didn't have the right to look at me that way. She didn't have the right to look at me that way. I'm sorry. I know your grandfather passing away must have really taken a toll on your emotions. She stepped toward me and put her hand on my shoulder gave me a tiny smile as if for old time's sake. But for some reason I didn't feel comforted at all. Not that I was just angry at her, but the expression on her face when she leaned close to me comforting me is something complex. Something was different about her. I didn't quite place my finger on it, but something about her had definitely changed. Well, I'll be going for now. Track meet responsibilities and all of that stuff. See you later. See ya. Well, Zed made me feel uncomfortable. Wasn't just angry at all, so uneasy. What was it? I had never seen her like that before. I always seemed bitchy, but like still, this was extra bitchy. But I decided to pay no further attention as she continued running down the hall with a gaggle of friends behind her. I refocused. Is everything all right, girls? I want to go back. I want to. Miss Phillips, who was walking down the uh, hall towards me. Is everything all right, girls? Maybe, maybe not. Who are you? Nothing we couldn't handle, Mrs. P. Just a bunch of snobs. Suzu, hush! It was nothing, Mrs. Phillips. I see. Well, Miss Anderson, please accept my condolences for your loss. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Phillips. Your grandfather was a good man. He really upheld the philanthropy of his company's policies. And the money that went towards charity, too. Oh, it was amazing. I looked up him and I want to be as good well, as he was. Well, I know that you'll be as great as your grandfather. Hell yeah, she will. She'll be ten times better than her grandfather. Yes, I will. Would I, would I really be better than my grandfather? Everyone seemed to have high expectations for me. I want to do my best and make my family proud, but to be better than my grandfather? Wasn't sure about that. From outside the school window, I saw a familiar bite. blue car pull up to the curb, and that would be my father in the driver's seat. Oh, my ride's here. Well, I guess I'll see you about tomorrow. Want us to come with you? Oh, no, it's okay. I'll be fine. See ya. Hey, Dad. Hey, honey. You calling me honey now? Is this what it's come to? Pity? Did you go in the car and notice my father's look trouble? Clutching at a steering wheel and staring straight ahead, as if something was really bothering him. Sure. You hit me. What are you going to say for yourself, Dad? About what happened yesterday. I'm sorry for yelling at you. Does your cheek still hurt? I mean, yeah, the sound was pretty bad in my ears, you know. I was, I was wearing headphones. It was pretty bad. And you got to squint to see the mark. There's a mark. I'm a girl for God's sake. I don't wear makeup. No, it's nothing to worry about. Sure. I mean Bye. it. I shouldn't have laid a finger on you. You know that you're my most precious daughter. You're all that I Are have. Are these words filled by your wife? That sucks. I... Yeah, he couldn't bring himself to say what he could never say to me for such a long time. I always wanted to hear those words from how he really felt. But I guess even now he couldn't say to me. I turned my head away to look out the window, but there was no point in waiting for something that was never going to come. And like that, he started to drive and the conversation between us ended. I decided to focus my attention on the passing scenery. We were talking about the usual route. We were taking the usual route to Grandfather's house. It was located within the vicinity of the school district. It was still pretty far from school and from where our house was. 
He had always lived alone. He insisted on doing things by himself, even at his age, living in such a large house. I wonder, did he pass away with no one at his side as well? It sounded so lonely and sad. What strange that he decided on living all alone in his large estate. If anything, he could have lived with us. Though he and my father probably would have given each other the silent treatment of the entire time, maybe living alone was preferable to that. I actually hadn't visited him for quite a while. Visits to his house were most frequent when I was a child, and I had grown up long since then. The last time I visited, though, I, was, I thought he just looked like he usually was, happy and healthy. But things changed in the back of my mind. I knew that he would have to leave one day. It wasn't that humans could live forever. Soon, soon, Darcy, soon. The science, science is building uh, freezing technologies, uh, cry, cryogen technologies. It could, be, it could be better. So why did my heart still feel, still feel so heavy? The car ride was mostly spent in silence until he spent... How was school? Maintaining your grades, I hope. Oh my god, he's trying to make small talk. Um, yeah, I've been trying my best as of so far. Trying? That's not really doing the best you can, is it? Oh my god, is she dead? Stop. With my father, only some words I said were filtered through his ears. It was difficult to keep up a conversation without eventually talking about academics or my future, even if I was something loosely based on it. He always found a way to integrate it whenever we talked. Anyway... Your belongings are in the trunk. There isn't a lot, so I'm sure you can manage bringing them inside the house. After all, you are on the road to being independent now. Yes, I can manage on my own, Dad. But I don't need help. The heart speaks. I need help. The usual silence resumed between us. I really wasn't sure what to say around him, especially when most of the time we didn't share the same opinions. One question did linger in my mind, though, as if he was going to justify acting so nonchalant at grandfather's funeral. I had the right to at least know why. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm gonna. Fuck. Oh shit. If I try again, I'm probably gonna get. Like, he's leaving me alone, so just, I, I just leave it alone. It's fine. There was no use talking to him about this. It would be reopening a wound or reapplying a bruise. I sighed. He gave me a side, side glance out of curiosity, but didn't pursue it further. Typical. I leaned against the car door and stared out the window. I really couldn't think. What would this place be like? I had been to my grandfather's house before. It was one thing visiting. It was another thing actually living there. How would I manage living on my own without any training to really care for a house? I knew that naturally the bills would be paid by my parents, who inherited grandfather's stocks to the corporation, but I had never lived independently before. Thinking about it made me feel like some kind of bird being pushed out of the nest. Though I was technically an adult, I felt unprepared and a bit daunted at the prospect of actually moving to a new place. Most people at my age would be called ecstatic. Ecstatic? Ecstatic? Is that how you... Excited. Moving out. After all, it would symbolize some kind of change in their lives, but like being on the road, independence. But it felt like it was nothing of the sort. I really hoped it would let my parents down. I wouldn't let my parents down. I wouldn't want to let grandfather down. What would he be seeing right now? I gazed at the passing clouds in the sky. If you're out there, grandfather, how would you be doing? Would there be anything you want to tell me at this moment? And of course, no answer. What was I doing searching for an answer in the heaven that would or would not exist? I ducked my head to stare at the bite blur of trees and cars from a car window. My head was definitely going to the closet there at the moment. Either way, I found myself being driven off to my new home. Holy shit, that's huge. The car rolled to a stop and I drifted out of my thoughts. Here we are. Go on in. Alright. Tell mom my lover. Alright. Alright. I love you, Dad. Uh, I couldn't say it. No, make sure. To, no. Make sure to come by and visit us often. No, I'm going to miss you lots. Nothing other than blank stare. I paused a bit before reaching for the car door and away with any form of goodbye, but he didn't speak again. I sighed and exited the car, hearing my dad pop up in the trunk. I saw the two large bags I packed last night that were large enough to carry the only things I needed. I took them out, placed one bag on each shoulder, and closed the trunk. He then drove off, leaving me alone in the front of the mansion. I watched the blue car fade in the distance from the road before turning to see my new home. There it is. It's huge. My grandfather gave me this? It's hard to believe. 
The house was framed by a set of tall gates and hastily pushed them aside to take in the entire estate. The house still looked like it was when I last visited him. At a glance, it seemed kind of intimidating with its size. Though if I came closer, it was clear that there was more to it than that. The brick walls were framed by shrubbery and lovely flowers, giving it a homey and welcoming look, but in contrast, the tall doors in the house gave me a feeling of grandeur. Who knew what was waiting for me? But I wouldn't back down this moment. I took out the key to the front doors and unlocked them. Well, might as well make myself at home. I'll be staying here for quite a while anyways. That's when I saw them. Laying on the floor was a group of men. They were all unconscious, but there was no explanation why they were there in the first place. I dropped my bags and I let the door close on its own behind me. What? Who the heck are these guys? Why are they here? What's going on? Some some of them had open wounds, the blood was staining the floor, and the scent was limited intermingling with the air. Oh shit, it got dark. I couldn't help but feel bad for them, instinctively, but nevertheless I was shocked and a bit angry at the sudden intrusion. My mind suddenly went from caring and concern to confused and demanding answers. Who are you guys? No response. I call the police. Still nothing. Some of them seemed to be awake to answer or respond to me. It seemed surreal. To have a random stranger in the house I just moved into. I wanted answers quickly, and that was until. Hey, get away from me! Woman, you're going to let me kiss you. I couldn't believe it myself, but within a mere blink of an eye, one of the men went from lying on the floor to being right in front of my face. What was even more odd was the fact that I felt serene and calm about it. Slowly, a desire burned from my chest, telling me to accept his kiss even in my mind, vehemently refused. Uh, go, go ahead. Good. Good. Alright. Mm. Why would you show this? As he kissed me, I could feel my body grow weak. I didn't know why, but his kiss was draining me of my energy, and yet it was so good it made my heart sing. It was a strange and tingling feeling that danced over my every nerve in my body. I could feel streams of intangible energy run up my body into my lips. It felt odd, but at the same time, it felt amazing. Sam, stop it. Hmm? The person kissing me, Sam, was his name, glanced behind him. I said stop. Now. now. Mm. Fine. Damn it, man. Finally, you pulled back and I was left standing there in a daze. What? Huh? I couldn't tell my mind what was going on. My mind was completely unwrapped by the kiss and my thoughts. That melted in the depths of my forgotten memories. Please forgive my brother. He's a bit reckless. He's your brother now. At least I feel a hell of a lot better than you right now. Because you used your abilities on her. Powers? Sam, you're such a reckless brute. Taking advantage of a beautiful young woman like her. Shut that pretty boy mouth of yours before I rip it off your pretty boy face. So many guys Sheesh, you guys. Can we not fight right now? Not all of us are in the best state. I guess you are right, Matthew. I agree. Hmm. However, as the men got up and started chat through me, my thoughts began to reassemble, and I remember my confusion and anger once again. Only well, now multiplied tenfold. Six guys, that's it. What? Huh? Did you say something beautiful? And I exploded. What is going on? Why the hell are you all here at my house? Why are you all wounded? Why are you all kiss me? Who are you guys? Couldn't help but explore exploding, but after all that taking advantage of being left in much, much state. My words escaped without filter, definitely scarred the, scared the men around me, and even the man who kissed me. Wait a second, the guy who kissed me. Ouch! What's your problem? What is your problem? You can't just go around for someone to kiss you like that. Are you some kind of pervert? Pervert? <laughs> it was only a kiss! It might mean nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. What? Was it your first kiss? Ow! Hey! What was that for? <laughs> I know first kiss sounded exactly amazing and full of sparkles and something out of fear to him, but I at least expected it to be more than just something forced. So it was your first kiss. Stop making such a big deal out of it. No, it was first kiss. You asking to get punched again? Well, what do you want me to do? It's not like I can somehow take it back. You shall at least apologize. That will suffice. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? 
<sighs> Apologies aren't my forte, but I'll try my best. Good boy. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. Yes, you did. He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just... I act on impulse, okay? It's difficult to control myself and... <sighs> what am I saying? Don't know. It's okay. I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah. No problem. Well, something happened to report him, right? I don't know. Anyway, if you try to pull up any funny business in the future, just fair warning, I know tech won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Think I've figured enough. Time to get back to the main issue. So, what exactly are all of you doing in my house? <sighs> Miss, please forgive us in our intrusion. <sighs> we didn't know this abode belonged to anyone, nor did we have the time to take that into consideration. What? What do you mean you didn't just... Don't just barge into people's homes. We wouldn't have had to if we weren't as wounded as we are currently. We just escaped from a deadly fight that could have ended our lives. Luckily for us, your home was near and the windows were unlocked, so we quickly came inside. Oh, I think these are those guys, you know, who did, uh, what do you call it? Like, in the starting, you heard, like, a bunch of gunshots and stuff, so... I think they came back from that and they just, like, landed up on this, so... Uh, Last time I remember, there were a few lost for exchanges from stepping on private party, although considering the severity of their wounds, it had to be serious. I guess that explains the wounds, but not why he kissed me. He had absolutely no right to do that. Well, lovely flustered lady, it's hard to explain, truly. We're not exactly normal. Then what are you? Oh no, what are you guys? Do you mean something? I asked almost jokingly, but the boys seem to take my question differently. <sighs> <laughs> well, yeah, actually, something like that. Matthew. Matthew's a fun guy. <laughs> We're incubi, miss. Demons who consume and use sexual energy of humans to survive. Incubi, the fabled demons that exist to haunt humans and make them sex-crazed monsters. The mythical beings that could look like anyone just to get into your pants. Imaginary monsters you only saw in movies or on TV. Hello? Did you hear him? We're telling the truth. Do you think she's still processing it? <laughs> yes. And she'll understand right about... Right. It was funny way it lasted, but it's time to cut the joke short. Incubuses don't exist. There was no way they existed. That would be practically impossible. Ahem. <laughs> Incubi is the correct plural for, and yes, we do exist. Prove it. As soon as the words left my mouth, I instantly regretted them. Very well. Eric, go ahead. Come on, show me what you got. Is there? He's there. <laughs> Very well. My sweet, you're so tempting with such non-belief. Let me ease your mind with a tender kiss. I promise. You'll enjoy every minute of it. And maybe you'll even want more. What? Mm. Once again, I was lost in a pool of calm and serenity, staring into Eric's eyes. Felt waves of heart. Heat coursed through my chest and out of my face, painting my cheeks red in their wake. I couldn't help but nod and agree to his offer. Yeah, okay. Mm. With another kiss, my heart began to flutter once again in my chest, and my mind was sent spinning in a heat of passion for pleasure. Yet I could feel my body drain of energy as it kissed me. All right, that's enough. Ah, very well. Hmm, <laughs> I feel so much better. As he pulled away, I was left in a melted mush pool and felt weak in the knees, despite my will to manage stand straight in front of the boys before me. The world around me began to spin as I tried to speak. I think I'm going to... Ah, where are our manners? I'm James, and these are my brothers. Oh, Sam, James. Eric, Matthew, Damien. and Damien. Damien? From Wayne? Wayne Enterprises? Don't Miss, see. are you okay? Maybe, Shit. Maybe. She, she fainted. fainted. Couldn't believe it. Ink my real. All this on my head was just all in black. Floating in the darkness, my mind kept me playing the scene over and over again, reminding of my body and the touch of the incubator lips against mine. 
However, I began to feel a smooth silk around me and my eyelids unwillingly opened. Mm, where? I woke to find myself in an unfamiliar place which was mom, dad. Where was mom, dad? I'm pretty sure this wasn't my room. Oh wait, I lived in my grandfather's house now. Of course it would be unfamiliar. I rubbed my eyes and surveyed my surroundings. <sighs> but I was still in the clothes that I had the same house in. I was laying in a silk-covered bed and I remember coming in the afternoon, so why was it nighttime already? Suppressing a yawn, I stretched my arms. Maybe I should order some food for delivery. I was feeling pretty hungry. I was to sit up, but I suddenly realized that I wasn't alone. You're awake. Huh? <laughs> Since when was he standing there? No, the heck was he? A guy in my bedroom and did be... There's no way. Hmm. Sorry, I think I was saying my thoughts all out. Why was I apologizing to a stranger who only said two words since I woke up? Wait, he looked really familiar. And it all came back to me. Incubus, he was an incubus. He and I and brother, he, he and his brothers came here for the refuge. And two of them kissed me and yet, and then I fainted. And then was how things came to this. Oh. I was leaning against the far wall, looking at me. My heart began to race as I thought the endless is supposed to be the brought me. I hated the thought of being under incubus power, especially in the bedroom. Be calm. I'm going to be calm. Took a deep breath. I was sure that any of them want to take advantage of me, they would have already. Yep, yeah, I'm awake now. That's good. I saw a small form of smile on his face, which made me blush a bit. Why, though? One thing shall concern me, though. I'm not going to use my powers on you. Huh? How? I can read minds. It's an ability I was born with. Each of us has a different ability, outside of our usual mind-altering powers. Damn. Great. Even more surprised. I grew even more worried about the situation I was in. I see. How long have I been asleep? For a few hours. <laughs> it's already gotten quite dark outside. No shit. Oh, well, where are the others? My brothers are downstairs, cleaning up the blood from the lobby floor. <laughs> and making you dinner as an apology. Okay, that's unexpectedly sweet. Oh, it's the least we can do after invading your home and two of us using our powers on you. You've got a point. I had a fucker oh, that is so ugly that they're practically taking a bunch of me at that point. Even if they were demons. It was pretty rude to demonstrate their powers by kissing me. I wasn't some kind of human plaything. All of this seemed pretty unreal. It was, it was something out of those romance novels that Naomi sometimes read. Uh, read. I wish I could have just went back to sleep and forgotten all about this. Maybe I should just have called the police on them. Then I would have never landed myself in this situation. Uh, do you feel well enough to get out of bed? Uh, I think so. Whoa! <laughs> Trust me. I won't let you go. Um, I'm not just sure about this. Let me down. I promise. Uh, okay, I trust you. Good. I was speechless. You scared me as if I made nothing was so strong. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> it's all right. right. I'm used to it. Still closed my mouth for the time being so that it wouldn't weird him out and make things more awkward than they already were. Well, he didn't seem to mind carrying me or listening to me talk, so at least things weren't too strange. Damien seemed very quiet and calm about everything, especially with the situation we were in. However, there was a sort of longing in his eyes when he looked at me like just what, that, that wasn't lust, it was more admiration. Yep, all right. So once we reached the lobby, I decided I felt well enough to walk on my own. As strong as he was, it was like he was carrying nothing. I didn't want to make him carry me everywhere. Yep, that would be mortifying. Thanks for carrying me, but I can't. I think I can walk by myself now. Not saying that I didn't like it. I mean, I liked it. Not in a weird way, of course, but um, it's not like I get carried around all the time. What I'm trying to say is that it was really nice of you to do that. <clears throat> I started from a little bit my words again. Real smooth. It's no problem. I'll be heading to the dining room then. Sure. I'd see you. Bye. He gently lowered me to the ground before he walked off quietly, disappearing into the shadows of the dark lobby. Oh, hi. Hi. Suddenly, a boy who looked around my age or possibly younger bounced up to me, looked very familiar. Oh, wait. 
I'm Matthew, right? Mm hmm. That's me. Are you feeling any better now? We were all worried when you suddenly passed out. Oh, Alright, yep, sure. I'm really? Fine. Your face is kind of red. Do you feel sick? No, I'm fine. I'm sure of it. I must have been blushing when Damien was carrying me downstairs. How embarrassing. Well, if you say so. I hope Sam and Eric didn't make you upset. Oh, but I'm fine now. Hmm. Eh, it's okay. After all, I did to hit Sam after what he did and about Eric. I just want you guys to prove to me what you might say. So, I suppose in Cuba, you're real then. I wonder how exactly you got myself in this mess. First, my grandfather, then a fight with my father, blowing up on the set, and now this. I certainly did have a knack for getting myself into sticky situations. Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. He shoved his hand in his pocket with a cheery grin on his Wait face. Wait for it. Wait for it. Tell him to pull out your penis. Should I do a magic trick? Ta da! So cute, my god! What is that exactly? But it looks like a cat with a ferret mixed. A, a cat has a knife. He smiled and to wave it off, but when he opened his eyes and saw what he was holding, his face frozen in shock. Wait a second. What did I just make? The producer of the park was a creepy little Ah, dog. what is that? <laughs> I'm sure. Looks a creepy dog with a knife and the nerd eyes and stuff. His face fell considerably dropped on the floor, scooting away from a friend. Get it away from me! He might be possessed by a demon or something! Oh, he, he's not. But isn't he a demon? That's himself? not what I wanted to make! I just wanted to surprise you with a stuffed animal or just something to cheer you up. That looks like it came straight no, out of a funny. horror movie. He stomped his little look down his feet. Oh, it's okay, man. It looks so dejected. I mean, it's certainly unique. I think I'll But it looks so creepy. Yeah, I thought that guy said he wanted to cheer me up after all. I picked up the doll and looked at it closely. I'm sure it looked pretty weird at first, but it could be cute. As I looked at it from a certain angle, it gave me a small smile. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good to see you smiling, even though the thing I made still kind of creeps me out. <laughs> sure, it creeps me out too, bro. Anyway, you should come with me to the dining room. We're almost finished with the food, and, well, I don't mean to brag, but we're pretty decent chefs. Uh-huh, are you now? Okay. Hmm, alright. Sounds great, lead the way! Let's go eat! Hmm, something sounds good. My stomach rumbled and began. I was starving. Oh, the girl's awake. Yeah, excuse you, I have a name, you know. Should we really care? Yes, you should. You kiss me at least, what, one time and I punch you like three, four times? Sam, I will roast that tongue for dinner if it doesn't stop flapping in that idiotic mouth of yours. Whatever. I apologize for his attitude. Well, uh, apology taken. Well, well, that's fine. <laughs> Good. I hope you'll enjoy the meal we prepared for you. Meal? James meant maybe um, for a second I mean I understand what James meant. Maybe there's a dog in my head and distracting me. Oh that's right, Damien and Matthew mentioned that they were making dinner as an apology. Oh wait, you didn't have to. We insist. Besides, it's quite impossible to undo our cooking, even if you command us to. Alright, well, thank you. Matthew put down the last of the plates on the table and bowed a bit exaggerated to me, gesturing the table with sweeping and motion. Ah, there we go. Dinner's all served. Okay, Matt. Okay, Matt. Sure. The table was full of various foods from an eclectic selection of cuisines. One portion of the table was... What the f... No. Ha. Huh. There you go. One portion was filled with elegantly plated Asian foods, and the other portion was some yummy-looking dessert. And there were yet more and more plates than I could possibly Im imagine. Whoa, that's a lot of food, and it looks so good. We hope you enjoy it, my sweet. Oh, I will. What? Sweet me? That's enough, Eric. Hmm. 
<laughs> You're no fun, James. But I don't fun. need to be fun, Eric. Miss, please follow me. Sure, yes, I will. I didn't know what came over me, whether it was politeness, maybe his power, I couldn't help but take his offered arm. James seemed very kind and intelligent, but aside from that, there was something that set him apart from his brothers, not to mention he didn't really seem to hold much appreciation for them. Miss, I have to ask, why do you live alone? Well, it's kind of a long story. I'm all ears if you wish to tell. Sure. Briefly, I just moved here today. That explains the luggage you brought in when you came through the front doors. By the way, we put your belongings in the room you were sleeping in. That seems to be the master bedroom, I believe. Thank you. This house is really big. I don't think you can even explode the entirety of the estate when I was You child. lived here before? Uh, no, truth be told, it's my grandfather's house. I used to visit him all the time when I was young. May I ask why you now live in your grandfather's house? He actually passed away yesterday. It was quite... It was bequeathed to me in his will, and I was sent to live here whether I liked it or not. My condolences. It seems like you don't like the idea of living here. It's not that, I just, I don't like this house, or that I don't have found fond memories of being here. Just that the implications that come with staying at this estate are kind of complicated to explain. How do you feel about it? I certainly wasn't expecting that question, but in a good way, it was different from what I heard the entire day at school. I appreciate the fact that he was willing to listen. I feel angry, sad, scared, and confused. It's hard picking all the different emotions that I'm feeling right now. I wish I was stronger. You don't have to be strong. What do you mean? I understand that you're going through a difficult time, so it's okay to feel those emotions. You don't have to be strong at all. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, are you all right? There seems to be a small bruise on your cheek. He caught me off guard with that comment, but I thought no one would have noticed something as small as that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. He stopped and leaning close, a bit too close for my comfort, or maybe it was just me. Inspecting my face, he was really quite tall, having to bend over so much just to look at me straight in the face. It was hard to look at him, especially when he was so close. After a few seconds, he straightened up and began walking hmm. in. Well, if you're having any problems, I'm always here to listen. It's really kind of you to offer that. My pleasure. Here's your seat. Let me get your chair for you, lovely lady. Oh, um, Eric was very charming with his smile pulled at my heart. Uh, the way he kept flirting with me definitely designated him as a charmer of the demons, yet there was little distance, there was a little distance in his eyes. By the way, I apologize for my behavior earlier, stealing your second kiss like that. Huh? Oh, yeah, we didn't believe that they were incubi. I didn't believe that they were in Cuba. It's fine, I mean, you just didn't get up and grab a kiss for no reason. I'm not as forward, unlike Sam. <laughs> so I Eric leaned in and I spread in my ear. I won't lie, though. I enjoyed kissing you and feeling you melt in my arms. Ugh, Eric, stop. Stop. I was torn between smacking him and trying to play it cool. Be cool. You are sure you sure are quite the charmer. Yes, um, I am known for that. As much uh, as much as I do, I appreciate the constant compliments. You don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He batted his eyelids as he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Well, like you're trying to get in my pants. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Okay then. There you go. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment, he looked away, losing a bit of a smile. But before I could question, though, he turned to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? <laughs> I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. Yeah, she does. She does, doesn't he? Didn't she? I felt in my face heat up simply from his words, then I felt Eric take my hand and kiss I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression. I was betrayed. His face changed instantly that I was And I'm the queen of the Nile! What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. Yeah. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. Oh my god, he's grand. Actually, that's me in real life, but still, okay. 
Little boys will always make mistakes. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confirm. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, their fight is quite funny and charming. It's, it's fine. I really couldn't help but laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel like in a way he was much more mature than those, especially Eric. Oh, no, 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 no. Can I escape? Huh? Is something funny? Is something funny? No, nothing at all. Thank you for the meal. Okay. Oh! <laughs> yeah. You're welcome, miss. Thank you. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Eric, knock it off! <laughs> you know, Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group, but he had his big, tough act and was obviously was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. But there was more to him than that. I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're gonna need some cold water for that burn. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I don't believe we caught your name even though you know each of us. Oh, I'm Dorsey. It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Yeah, that's a nice name. I know, I chose it. Yeah. They were all comfortable around me. Despite the awkward situation we were in, it was natural for them to be around humans. I guess um, that was just how Incubi worked out. Hey, but I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. At once they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important, like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, like the being told that a bunch of incubator randomly appearing in a house was perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? Now you're just being rude, Sam. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? I mean, what specifically happened? Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently, we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of... misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. No problem. I, I take the apology. It's fine, I guess. So you're all better now, right? Yup. All thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful, we feed on sexual energy. But we don't just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. Hmm, good to know. I was in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them powers. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi intrigued me, but at the same time I could almost hear a warning sign going Is there anything else you wish to know? Well, what do you all think of Yeah, now? what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. We can take him easily. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter training? with them. You guys like the coin stuff and just train coming in the house and stuff. That moment, I didn't know what came over, but I still felt, felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there if they didn't know it was illegal to break in people's home. They probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff that probably would cause chaos all over town. Or on the flip side, they could be taken for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab props for research. That's even worse. Well, most of all, they reminded me of back then. I was standing alone, the entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it all quite alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such reverency, all while I stood there.
On the plus side, it wasn't engaging in the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It wasn't like kind of nice just standing back and watching things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one like I, I like better than me, so I have to spend more time. One second, dear mates. More time, uh, more time with myself. But there was such in bitterness that coupled with me, being alone made me feel so sad. There was already a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize at that moment. And even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I said to on it right then. I was going to see my grandpa. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk with Anyway my way over there and see what he had to say about it. I never met I never met seen him before that. What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might have turned to him. So after school just to walk there, I had no idea how to get there and was armed with only a scrub paper that I just could on as a seven year old, obviously had a great idea. I, I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, pressed up against the wall, and I was looking at the strangers passing by. Like always, people come to pass by in life, and to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that that was silly for even thinking that I could change things with my own hands. It was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that, is that you? you? I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment, things began to change. Life began moving into rusty joints and realized that things were moving along. I suddenly I had to become part of the crowd that moved on like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them, though. Would I? I, w I wanted to, but I wasn't sure that it was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house was the exact living arrangement that I imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one found out about this power. I was thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. And even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over, they would practically think I was part of a harem or something. Oh God, imagine if my parents came over and think my mom would faint. Who knows what my dad would do? I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Oh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out a pros and cons before they actually make this. Don't decision. worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. Thank you, Grandpa. It was strange that I had happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little. It did kind of make sense. They weren't on the same exact situation I was in before, but I didn't want to help them. I think we ease my consciousness also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounds. Um, clenching my hands in a fist and the minutes all to speak up. Well, um, you could... Um, what was that? That is, um... Spit it out already. Uh, you could stay with me here if you'd like. Since the roommate came still, I'm not sure what went to the heads from the words, but silently I cut that knife before I finally spoke up once more. It seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and well, I just moved to this giant house, so it seemed like it made sense. It was still quite in the room, I just to keep talking. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things I need all of you to Yes? Help. First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, safe for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Second, you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. No, I have already thought this through, and you as you are following my orders. It's alright, really. I mean, I just started living here myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here and train while helping you with the house. Servants for the lovely princess. What? Are you serious? Yes. Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> They all seemed to like the idea except for Sam, and hey, I didn't really hate that idea that even if they were in Cuba, it would be interesting having five guys help me with taking care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever! Only until we can beat up that group of punks! I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Yeah! Also beautiful. 
if you need a bedfellow. Nope. Eric, knock it off. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they only need help and they wanted to help people as fulfilled. So sure. what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in. Finally, I'm starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table and noticed James' eye twitching in addition, so I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Hmm. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. Alright, cut down the frickin' cusses, man. I'm just gonna hold it in. I merely smiled before I took some food for myself. There was one piece of food that intrigued me and was barely touched by the boys. It looked really green past the shrimp all over it. Huh, what's this? <coughs> that miss is a shrimp pesto dish. Pastas are my specialty, so I'm positive you'll enjoy it. I twirled some around my fork and tried it. It could feel senses open and the taste buds practically melted and delighted the taste. It was creamy and savory, almost impossible to describe. This is amazing! I'm glad you like it. At least someone here in the room has taste. And <laughs> Matthew and Sam glad James were to continue to eat. I could help a smile at the brother, brotherly quarrel before eating the rest of the pasta on my plate. James seemed to really hold high standards for his brothers, though it wasn't my place to question why. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon destroyed. Oh. So, Mom, excuse me. Hello? Hey, honey, how are you? I'm sorry I didn't get to see you off. Hey, Mom, I'm good. Everything's fine. I want you eating dinner. Oh, good, good. So, there was food there. Well, your father wanted me to call and talk to you about having a house party tomorrow night to celebrate the new house and all. House party? Tomorrow night? So soon? Your father insists. You know how he is with events. I knew exactly what she meant. She He didn't like long relaxing periods between important events. It was like they messed up. I was expected to act on the drop of the dime, but for moving immediately to the day after a funeral of my grandpa's house, no organizing a party. I know, well, since I don't exactly have you two here to help me arrange it, I'm going to need some time to prepare things. Oh, that's fine. I mean, Suzu and Naomi can help. I have work, and you know how your father is. I know, I have to do it myself. He won't help. I'm sure it'll be amazing, honey. I have faith in you. Thank you, Mom. Thank you. All right, I gotta go. I love you, sweetie. I love you too, Mom. Great, now how am I going to do this? Is something wrong? She has to organize a house party for her parents. True. Oh, yeah. oh right, mind reading. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta do it sooner. My parents will be really disappointed. I'll have to stay up and organize everything tonight. Hey, why don't we help you? That's what we're here for, right? I don't see why not. I can name a few reasons why we shouldn't. Sam? Back off! Uh, we'll take care of everything, miss. Just leave everything to us. Sure. Surprising, I didn't think the boys would offer help right off the bat. I couldn't help but smile. I was actually rather thankful now that I let them stay. Now, I didn't have to do everything alone. As I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but yawn. Feeling a little tired over there, princess? Yeah, it's been a long day. At least tomorrow's the weekend, so I can sleep in. Then it hurt me. Wait, where are you all going to sleep? We found some guest rooms on the opposite end of the house from the master bedroom. I'm sure those will do just fine. Got it. All right, then. I'm heading to my room and start to study and sleep. I guess I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. Well, I will. You too. Then I left the dining room and went to my room. Eric, no. What? I wasn't going to do anything. Yes, he was. <laughs> he is going to do something. As soon as I got my wave of exhaustion hit me, and I'm so tired all of a sudden I just woke up from the nap. I dragged myself to my bed and hauled up one of my bags. I opened it and grabbed my economics book, knowing that no matter how tired I was, I had to study at least a page or two before sleeping at last. Oh my god, you nerd. It was on the top page, on the page, kind of my mind as I read through them, but two or, two or three tries, I managed to understand what the page was about. Equations. Ugh. 
Rather than just changing my pajamas, I had to bed. Today had been a long day and I needed the rest. Hopefully, tomorrow will be better. Three days of surprise in a row would kill me. With that thought in my mind, I drifted to sleep, embracing the darkness of slumber. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking pretty boys think you're all that, huh? Well, save that to the end of my pistol! What's going on? My body felt like I was tied up and couldn't see anything beyond the darkness that surrounded me. Yet I could hear the sounds of a heated argument coming from the all directions. <laughs> One move and she gets it! Let her go! Matthew? Come on, chicken shit. Fight us like a real man. <laughs> like you scare me, Sam. Come on. Take one step. I dare you. Why can't I see? Stay away from her, Malix. Malix. And what are you gonna do, nerd boy? Suddenly I felt my seat pulled to one side, arms wrapped around my body, protective. I've got you. Don't worry. Huh? Eric? I was held in a tight embrace, I felt the world around me once again settled into a low peaceful hum, the hostility of the dream before me had faded into black as arms around me rocked me comfortably. Slowly through my eyes fluttered open and looked at the person holding me. Damien? I stared in the eyes of Damien, his face was painted with worry and courage and I knew he must have seen my dream. Why did I have a dream of Eric holding me though? You can't control your dreams. Oh well, I guess you're right. Are you okay? I'm fine, thank you. What time it's is 9 a.m. James and I were making breakfast when I, uh, oh. well... You can't control your mind reading? No. Not yet, at least. I hope to learn eventually, though. Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm all right. That's good. So, I'm assuming you had a nightmare. Sorry for disturbing you. You didn't disturb us, miss. Besides, we'd rather make sure you're okay before anything. Alright, I think I'm gonna leave this off right here. It's morning right now for um, these anime people, James and um, Damien and Darcy, which is me, played by me, and my beautiful voice acting for Darcy, even the guy. But this game is actually going pretty good, and it's going up and down at times. It's becoming a little boring sometimes. It becomes really interesting sometimes. Also, the romance kind of hits the spot sometimes. It just keeps on going, you know. But there's obviously sexual in innuendos that are coming up and down. Um, but whatever whatever it is, I'll hopefully we'll find uh, what we do. But uh, let me just, before that, let me just save this thing. Uh, obviously, I'm going to save it in this one, one slot. Are you sure? No? Yes, I'm sure. Yes. Alright, I am say I have saved it. Why is your mouse working? I'm not really sure, but uh, whatever the problem is, I'll probably start it up. Um, Alright, whatever it is, I'll probably start it up. Whatever it is, but I'm quitting the game right now, so I have saved it before. You sure? Yes, I'm freaking sure I'm gonna quit the game right now. And uh, there you go, you see my beautiful face right now, but let me make it bigger so I can talk to you all guys in right now in the corner. Let's see this. Alright. Uh -huh. There I am. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. It's sure to be an interesting game and uh, and everything, but it's time for me to end. It's been one hour and a few minutes that I've been uh, recording this for an hour. For, for more this game is surely interesting um thank you all guys who viewed this and thank you for the chat eddie um i did see that and thank you all we'll see you in the next one and uh, bye bye see you guys bye, -bye.